Hello, Matt here from Acorn Hub, and today I'm going to do a video on how to strip down this EP1 and also which contact points within the internals to polish, um, just to give you that little bit better feel when cocking it and pulling the trigger. It just makes it a little bit smoother. I've had a few requests to do this, so we'll go through it now. Firstly, I just want to apologise for the light. It's not the best in my living room, but we'll work with what we've got. So firstly, we need to remove the screws that hold in the trigger guard and the stock. I've already removed these, so I'm assuming you know which ones to remove. So that will just take away the trigger guard and also the grip, which leaves you with just the action. Now, the first bit we're going to work on is the trigger itself, the sear and the trigger. So what we need to do is we need to get a small... Allen key, that's what I use, and there's a pin there, you can just see it, that holds in the trigger. If we push that one out gently, and remove it from the back. Oh, just grab that, decided to run away on me. That allows the trigger just to slot out, and we'll come back to that in a minute. What we secondly need to do, is remove this little one here. Now that's the one that holds the sear in place, I don't know if you can see that. There we go. Just be careful when you do push this one out and end up removing the sear, because there is a little spring that holds the sear up into the hammer. So we take that out. Now this should just get a little lanky. It should just slide out. There we go. Pull that down, and as you can see, there's just a little spring on there, just be careful of that and make sure you don't lose that. Now, the trigger itself, all you want to do, is just, there's not so much polishing you need to do on this, maybe polish that top surface there, but there's not much contact made there. One thing I did do, was this little grub screw, I actually turned it around 108 degrees, just because the contact point there, you try and turn it, if you can make it out, is actually smaller than the other side, so it just reduces the contact on the sear, which again just makes it a little bit lighter for you. The sear, I just polish this point here, as you can see, which is the contact point on the hammer. Try and get it into focus. It's not going to want to go, is it? There we go. That's the point that contacts the hammer, so we just polish that point up just to make that smooth. And what I also did was just polish this surface here. It's gone a bit dull since I've lasted it, but I polished that surface because that's the surface that contacts with the little grub shoot screw that I've just shown you on the uh, trigger. So we've polished that up. That's all the trigger mechanism, this here, all polished up to where we need it to be. So once we've done that, we need to look at getting the hammer out of the... Um, of the action. So what we need to do is we just need to remove this screw on the end here. I've loosened this off already. What that does, that goes all the way through into your breech. That just allows the end cap to fall off. There's nothing here that can ping out or fly out anywhere and out will come your hammer spring and guide. Nothing else will fall out. That's all that's in there. That's all that holds in place. Um, secondly, what we need to do is we need to move this little screw here, which holds the hammer. Oops. And that's that. Still, nothing will fall out at the minute. The next thing we need to do is just flick it over, move the um, bolt out of the way, and what we'll see is a small little screw there. I do apologise, I have to pause the video there because I didn't have the right Allen key. So what we need to do is just need to remove this little um, Allen head screw there. Do be careful with this one. It is a very small screw and it can easily be um, stripped if you're not careful. So especially when you point it back in, just make sure that you're very, very careful. Now this will remove the breech from the tube. So just be careful when the screw does finally come loose like it has done now. Move some of this stuff to the sides, so we've got room. And what you're seeing now, let's flick it the other way actually so we can see. So that just comes away like so. And just be careful because, again, 
you've got a little seal on there and a little um, transfer port that does fall out and that seal can fall out so just be careful that it doesn't ping away to remove the hammer we just need to remove this little screw again it's not focusing very well this little screw here that holds the hammer in it's not going to come loose I'm just going to use an allen key sorry once that's removed this just holds the hammer into the tube itself okay that's that removed and now the hammer itself just slots out and there's your hammer now this tube this main tube is full of gunk and I mean full of gunk one thing I did was just got a bit of rag um, a bit of like wooden circular um, tubing or whatever you want to call it wrap the rag around it and just put it down and twisted it a few times just to get all the gunk and grease and dirt out of there obviously the manufacturer pumps it in um, just to keep it safe but there's no need for all that gunk at all so you can remove a large 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 amount of it the hammer itself the only contact points on this hammer are this here and this here so all you need to do again just like your um, your hammer uh, sorry your um, trigger in your sear just get a bit of wet and dry and polish it up working from a, a high grit uh, sorry a low grit a really gritty one up to a high smoother grit just to give it a, a polish and a, a shiny finish mine's dulled off again because it's um, it's had a bit of grease around it um, so it could just do with wiping down but obviously this this hammer's sliding up and down the tube like that and these are your contact points inside your tube so if you smooth them off, it should just make that that action within the tube slide a lot better. Um, once you've actually degreased your tube, I would recommend just putting a smear of molly grease just around this contact point and just around this contact point here. Um, that'll just, because it's metal on metal, it does need a little bit of grease on it just to prevent it from um, heating up or rubbing or, you know, whatever like that. But that's all you need. The amount that's in the tube is way, way, way too much. So just add your little bit around your two contact points and that's it. And then just to put it back, it's everything is we've just done in reverse. Hammer back in, screw it back in, put your breech back on, reassemble your, your trigger mechanism and slot it all back on. I hope that's been informative for you. If you do have any questions, do feel free to, to drop me a message in the comments or if you know me on Facebook, feel free to contact me on Facebook and I'll help where I can. Um, but I hope that's helped people. Uh, it's really really easy to strip down once you've done it once um, you'll know how to do it again it's very very straightforward don't be afraid of losing anything there's not that many parts you can lose as I said the only thing you've got to be really careful of is just that spring that you can see on the sear and just the, um, the transfer port and the seal apart from that there's not really much more you can lose um, hope you've enjoyed it I've hoped it helped give it a thumbs up and a like and I appreciate it and we'll see you next time thank you